I'm going to talk about a potential leak from the valve housing. Now, the way to find that is to put a balloon over your barrel. So get a tight balloon, a small entry one, a little one, just put it over like that. Notice it's very floppy, and then I just use gaffer tape to tape it around. Okay? And if you leave the balloon like that, um, and it fills up, you know the leak is down here, potentially. Now, I'm not an expert, so it probably could be other places too. But what I did, when my balloon filled up, I took it apart again, and I had a look at the valve housing, and one of these O-rings was sort of twisted a bit and broken. Now, to give you an idea, a lot of these parts seem to be quite sharp, and a machinist friend of mine said they really need to be polished, and particularly with the power plant and ones in there at the moment, because remember this is the original one, um, it was quite sharp, very sharp. And you can see why the O-rings will get damaged when you push them on and cut and that sort of thing. So we polished all this up and now it's smooth and easy to move the O-ring, slip the O-ring over. So just be aware of that if you can find someone to help you polish and get rid of these sharp edges because there seem to be an awful lot of sharp edges that work against you know the o-rings type thing and the balloon trick certainly showed me which o-ring was faulty so now i'm going to show you an, another one that i replaced and that was the valve rod so this is the valve rod and there's a tiny o-ring at the end there and this one goes inside like this. So this is the original one. And that O-ring blocks the little hole like that. So while it's out, I replaced that one too. Now in the power plenum, I replaced those two um, because you've got it all apart. And I thought I might as well do those to eliminate those. And there's a couple in here and up here. So. Uh, the Captain O-ring one didn't have one, so I got a, a power plenum one from FX, and the FX one was quite good. Again, it showed the details of the internal parts and this part here, which was the new power plenum part. So you got these. This is the valve housing, and you've got O-rings number 29. So you've got to replace those, and there's a couple here too that you need to replace. So you want to replace all these to eliminate. And number 28, of course, is a valve rod, and there's one at the end there. But I'm not quite sure why they don't actually say that. But anyway, so it's a good idea to get the list, and it's got the list of all the parts and the o-rings now the tools there is only one time that i use the ball pen hex head and that's in the regulator so when you want to take the regulator out or adjust it this is what you need so this is very very handy now the rest of all the others i use the straight one the reason why I found, particularly when it's brand new and you're opening it for the first time, for instance, taking off the cover here, you need a good strong connection. Now with a ball one, it's not so good. But with a flat one, you get a good firm grip. So, and these are on quite tight when you first take this off. Of course, after you take it off, it then gets easier. So just be aware of that fact. Make sure you use a good solid one and good quality so it doesn't burr or anything like that here. Now the O-rings. I'm going to talk about the O-rings. Of course you use 
the special lubricant for O-rings, make sure you use that. I use a pair of brass O-ring tools and the soft brass, so they seem to work without scratching the, uh, the delicate parts and um, they're quite good to sort of get underneath things and yeah now another valuable tool that i use is a head magnifier so you really want to get yourself one of these because they make life so much easier when you're looking at very very fine o-rings very small o-rings another tool is ernest i saw watched ernest's video and he uses this now i can understand why I got very small, well, I, I don't have small fingers, so it's very hard trying to hold this and remove these O-rings, but if you get yourself one of these, and this is a chuck key for a vice, this is a four, four, um, four handle one. Okay, so all you have to do is just nip it in there and now you have a nice firm grip and it's easy to remove these O-rings. So, suggest you buy one of these. Absolutely fantastic. Wouldn't be without it. The regulator leak or creep. Now, when you use the liquids, the detection liquid, there is one here and there is another area in here so this is where the regulator hides in here so these are areas that can leak so if you've got air coming through it will be noticeable using the liquids particularly the snoop one but you've got to be careful here because i went overboard a little bit trying to put a whole lot of liquid around and finding it in the end, when I pulled everything out, it's got these Bellevue washers. Now, these washers are just made of plain steel, and they started to rust because a little bit of liquid got inside through here, I think. And, uh, yeah, so I had to clean them all up. So be very careful how much liquid you use. Now, inside there are six O-rings. So... And you've got to take those apart. And I'll show you those. So there they are here. They're all in here. So you've got to replace them all. And this is the, the little piston, reg piston. So that's one of them on there. So that's that one there. You need to change that. So make sure you've got plenty of spare O-rings, okay? I'm talking about these Bellevue washers. Again, you've got to get organised when you take apart this type of rifle. I got myself a block of wood and I put each nail in here and represent a group of the washers. And I've also done the little pattern of how they sit on here. This is the red piston there and how it looks. So do that and you become organised when you take them out. You can put them straight in without losing them. It's advisable to get a second set or get a, a spare set complete. So you're ready. If you have any problems, you're ready to go with a new one. And another little part that I found useful is I've got a little bit of straw. That's the right diameter for the O-rings and the Bellevue washer, sorry and that goes over like that and they slip on inside. So that happens when you're putting everything back together again. So it's a good idea to have something like this and I just leave it permanently on that. So there you go. Couple of tips regarding storage and documentation. I got these from the Captain O-Ring site so they're really good because they're scaled so they give you a quick indication. Of course, part of the tools you need a vernier caliber, 
caliper there, so they're worth getting. I've got a little electronic one, which is really good. Laminate these. Now these are quite good, and also you can get the FX one too. So keep those. Another little trick I do is just keep my old O-rings, so I've got an idea what they look like, and just as reference, parts that I've changed. Keep an eye on what's going wrong. Now I've just got a box, and this is set up for my other rifle actually, my other two rifles, so, and I'm going to do the same, I haven't done it yet for the impact. So I've just got these little vials, and I put the model of the rifle on there, the number according to their description, and then the size, and then the side, I put describe what it is. And that's sealed in a, a little vial, but it's also got the O-rings inside too. So air destroys O-rings, of course, and, um, and that's put away. So it might be an idea to get yourself organised so you can see at a glance what they are and which ones to get out and use. And that's about it. Um, that's what I've learnt taking apart the impact and putting it back together again and hope that helps someone out there. Thanks for watching.